To start off with this massive piece, I am actually painting over a canvas I'd already painted over the top of. Um, and I wanted to do this because I wanted a bit of texture to the painting. So I am working with a layer of oils here, just using a large round brush, just a thick bristled one, so it's quite hard. And I'm just blocking in sort of the basic shapes and the basic structures of this lion. I have thinned out my oil paint using some uh, Sans Odor, Odorless Thinner, and I'm just trying to create this blocking using the sketch that I put down in white chalk as a guide. I did actually project this onto the canvas because it's such a big canvas. If I had started off with a white canvas, so completely blank, this layer probably would have been done in oil, uh, sorry, in acrylics rather than oils. But because I'm already working over the top of an oil painting, I decided to work straight into the oils because the acrylic paints cannot be painted over the top of dry oil paints because it just ruins the painting when it's finished. So all I'm really doing here is blocking in the shape of the eye and I let it dry for about two or three days. So I am actually able to rest my hand on this canvas um, to just start refining the shapes of the eyes. And this isn't actually the final detail layer. This is just a blocking stage, just sort of modeling my image a little bit more. So for most of the fur around the eye, I'm using this angled brush. And this is probably, I think I like a number five or number six angled brush. I'm not too sure though. And for most of this layer, I just stick with this angled brush. I'm just blocking in the main shapes and the main colors of the fur. Whenever I paint fur like this, I always start with the darkest colors first. So I just block in where those dark colors are and then add the gradually lighter colors over the top. Now, because it's oil paints, you can't work in a complete layer. So I just pick out the parts that I know are going to be dark first and then leave the rest as gaps to be filled in with the lighter colors later. You might have seen some of my acrylic painting videos where I go almost everywhere with a particular layer and then work the lighter colors over the top in the next layer. But you can't work like that with oils. For the oils, it's really important to look at where those dark shapes are where those light shapes are and just paint where those shapes are rather than everywhere. But the process is pretty much identical whether I'm painting with acrylics or with oils. I always start with my darker colours first and then work my lighter colours over the top. So this layer as a whole itself counts as my darker colours layer. And I'm just using this to give me an idea and a sense of where that fur is going to be and trying to establish that form of the facial structures just that little bit more. So you can see here I've slowed it down a little bit where I've added my burnt umber layers first mixed with a little bit of black and then I'm building up with some raw sienna and some burnt sienna sort of orangey colors and then finally working over the top with a bit of yellow ochre which is what you can see here and then finally for the area under the eye that's buff titanium mixed with a little bit of black mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre so the same process is followed for the nose i start with my dark colors blocking in that edge and then using that burnt umber and then that raw umber and then that burnt sienna and then that raw sienna just to start adding in that fur detail and again this isn't the final detail layer of fur this is just there to give me an impression of where that fur is going to be which will help me later on in this painting I save my whites for last, and even though that looked like pure white, it isn't actually pure white. It's a mix of buff titanium with a little bit of burnt sienna with a little bit of white. So it's quite an off white. Here you can see where I've got up to so far. So I'm zooming in, showing you all those details, just giving you an idea of, sort of where I'm at at this stage of the painting. This is probably about two days worth of work so far. So I had to leave it to dry for a couple of days. You don't have to leave it to dry, but I just didn't get a chance to work on it for a few days. So I start to work on the next stage, which again is just blocking in 
the fur shapes and sort of the rough idea of the clumps of fur and the structures of the face and the mane just using that angled brush. I'm not picking up too many details and I'm not worrying too much about like tiny, tiny little hairs at this stage. I'm just trying to block in the basic shapes just to give that feature or that lion's face a little bit of form. So one tip for around the mouth is I always like to put a little bit of a grey blue down first before I put down my whiter layers, which you can see I'm doing here. And that just adds the impression of a little bit of shadow and some layers of darker strands of fur underneath, helping to establish the form of that muzzle. The same thing for the chin. I start with my darker layers and then build my lighter layers over the top. I have actually added a little bit of cobalt blue to this mix to create this colder gray color. And then just the same as before, building up those whiter layers at the end. Then I move on to the nose and I've got a little bit of red for this as well. I'm not sure which red, I think it might be a lizard and crimson. And all I'm doing here is just starting to sort of model the form and the structures. Again, I'm just using that angled brush. I'm not trying to be particularly detailed. I'm just trying to create interesting marks that follow the shape of the nose. Then it's sort of been about three or four weeks now and I've just let this painting dry. Again, you can let it dry for longer. You can also let it dry for less time. I usually leave about two or three days between each painting session, but I just didn't have chance to actually paint them because I've been busy. But this is now the refining detail layer, or almost the refining detail layer. I'm just starting to sort of establish the shapes and the structures a little bit more and just using now a large filbert brush to start blocking in the shapes of the mane. You can see on the left hand side I've already done this and I didn't film that left hand side but I'm following the exact same process on the right hand side. So I'm just using that large filbert brush with my darker colours first and then actually switching to a smaller filbert brush for when I add my yellow ochres, my buff titaniums and my whites mixed with my yellows to create these finer details. And I love working with the oil past uh, the oil pastels, the oil paints like this, because it is very similar to working with soft pastels, because you can blend each strand of fur really nicely together and create this soft, fluffy looking appearance. And I think that's fantastic when you want this slightly out of focus fur, especially for around the mane of this one, which frames the face, where it, which is where I want most of the details to be. So I'm actually using a dagger brush here just to block in some rough sort of loose strands of fur. You probably didn't even need a dagger brush this small for this painting. I could have worked with just these large brushes, but I can't help myself and I love getting stuck in with those details. And again, I'm just using that large filbert brush to start to block in some of those whites and refine those strands of fur a little bit more. So I want to try and make them a little bit more solid looking and more refined. Just to finish it off, I like to add in some darks near that muzzle, and I'm just using a small angle brush here to do that. And I'm just refining that jawline just a little bit more. Then I repeat the process for the top of the muzzle as well, so those cheeky areas, and I'm just using, again, that filbert brush, a large filbert brush and a smaller filbert brush for those details. For the nose, I just repeat the same thing again, working from dark to light, first putting in my darker colours, so my blacks, my browns, and then moving on to my sort of warmer colours, which are my yellow ochres and my burnt siennas. And then finally, with that smaller filbert brush, I'm just adding in these whiter strands of fur. And because it's oil paints, that white will actually pick up some of the colours underneath, so it will become this sort of off-white colour but it will blend nicely and softly with the fur colours around it and that's one of the things that I really like about painting in oils. I do the same thing for the fur around the face, the only difference is I'm not using that pure white and more of the fur is this sort of beigey yellowy colour rather than that sort of orangey colour. For the areas under the eye I like to start with sort of a mid-tone grey with a touch of burnt Sienna in there just to warm it up a little bit and then I'm just using that filbert brush 
just following the direction of that fur to add these short strands. And then finally I've got this small detail brush, again I probably didn't even need to go that small with it, just to finish it off and add those final touches. I then just repeat that process again, I know I'm repeating myself quite a lot with this, but I just repeat that process again, working from dark to light and just refining that fur even more. Just using that large filbert brush and then that smaller filbert brush for the lighter strands and the thinner strands. I wasn't quite happy with the eye, so I just wanted to refine it a little bit more by glazing on some colours and just sort of refining the shape and the structure of that highlight a little bit more. Then it's just a case of adding the remaining fur textures, which again, I'm just using that filbert brush and I'm just adding this new layer of fur over the top, thinking carefully about the colours that I'm using. Then once that's done, it's the final step, which are the whiskers. Now the whiskers, I always leave a few days to dry. So I have, I have actually left the painting to dry for about two or three days so that I can paint the whiskers over the top smoothly and cleanly. And to do this, I'm just using an angled brush. Uh, I could have done this with a liner brush, but that would have created two thinner marks and it wouldn't have been ideal for the size of the painting. And I also, I don't know if you saw it there, I just added a touch of yellow ochre to the edges just because I wanted it almost vignetted out at the end rather than just pure white. And then this is pretty much it. This is the finished painting. I did actually add a little bit more black towards the top of the left eye just to refine that shape a little bit more, but it's pretty much done. I don't think I filmed the nose, but I'll zoom in a little bit and you can see how I just modeled the nose that little bit more and refined those shapes and those structures. So you can see here as we zoom in, you're going to see more of the nose and you're going to see all those details and that lovely soft buttery fur texture that you can get with oil paints, but you can't really get that with acrylic paints. So here you go, there's the nose and all that soft buttery fur around the nose and the mouth. And I think this is actually one of my favorite paintings that I've ever done, and I would love to do more of this size painting. Let me know what you think of this painting in the comments. So here it is. I hope you found this video useful. This is how my process for painting a lion in oils. I know it wasn't quite a tutorial, but I hope you picked up a few things while watching. Thank you so much. And as always, for more wildlife art tips, please head on over to studiowildlife.com.